After some playtesting, it's finally time to talk about Shrouded Fables, the next upcoming Pokemon set. It will be the format for the World Championships, so very excited to get to that. This is going to be my predictions, what decks I think are going to appear at the top, what decks I think are currently the best. I'm going to try and rank them as best I can. This list I'm looking at here is massive. But before we jump into the video, let's head over to our sponsor, Vault X. Vault X is the only company I trust protecting my cards. First off, you start with the sleeves. That's the first line of defense to protect your cards as you pull them. Organize them into their binders. I prefer the zip ones. There's some nine sleeve 12s. There's a ton of different options, different colors, and they're even themed around the Pokemon sets as they're released. If you're a player like me, they also do deck boxes, able to transport your deck to events safely. They really do cover everything you need for the game. Card sleeves, binders, deck boxes, accessories. Like I said, for my collection and the cards I really do care about, like my Gengar collection, my trainer gallery stuff, all of the cards I love, I do only trust their zip binders. We've got, I think, like three of them already. They are the most robust, most professional feel folders I have used and wouldn't trust anyone else. If you want to support the channel, you can use the link below or use the code WOODYREC to get a discount on your purchase. This will also give you 10% off, so hopefully it's a help to you. Anyone that decides to use it, a massive thank you, but let's get into the video. Like some of these I just haven't tested because I just haven't got the time to try all these stuff like Burnett and things. So I'm gonna go through the more important ones, show you some deck lists and show you what you should be testing against or playing for the upcoming league challenges, cups or the world championships, depending what you're looking at. Although if you go into the world championships, you should probably be telling me what to play. Um, let's take a look through this though. We're going to start with, I think, one of the most popular decks, one that just keeps coming back, one that will not die, Charizard EX. Uh, let's look at the deck list first, then we'll uh, rank it. So not a ton changes for Charizard, honestly. We do see the Dusclops line come in. I do think the 1-1-1 is kind of... You're just asking for stuff to be prized. You're asking for pieces to be missing, especially when you need it. Sometimes you just... I would say majority of the time you just need the Dusclops, you don't need the Dust Noir anyway. Committing a rare candy to it is devastating. Obviously, if Charizard does become popular, we'll see stuff like Eri and rare, uh, not rare candy, uh, Devolution come in to get rid of those rare candies. Uh, so you really can't afford to use one on Dust Noir. And if you put a Duskull down and slowly evolve it up, the Dusclops is going to get knocked out before you can activate it. Uh, other than that, not a lot changes. Unfair Stamp has been the uh, ace spec of choice honestly you could play anything i quite like prime catcher i keep going back and forth be between those two they're just so powerful so versatile and just good into any matchup really uh the extra draw for the unfair stamp is nice though it's why i've gone down to two iona we do run the roxanne obviously with dusclops we can force them into roxanne range if they're trying to play around it we can uh we can uh, push the hand force the hand uh, which is a really nice combination the Dusclops is really nice in a few different ways. You can get your counter catches online if you need to. Uh, Defiance ban. There's so many different combinations you can do. Do remember though, you can't use unfair stamp, so you can't Dusclops unfair stamp because it specifically says if they knocked out a Pokemon in their turn. Other than that, it's a fairly standard list, honestly. The only other card worth mentioning is Temple of Sinnoh. Uh, that's to try and improve the Lugia matchup because Lugia is it's heavily favored for Lugia, so we've got a few things in here to try and help. The most important being the Temple of Sinnoh. Combined with something like Unfair Stamp, we could potentially get them out of the game. Obviously, we could uh, avoid stuff like their Gift Energy and they don't draw back up. Two cards is really good to screw Lugia. It's one my friend has been testing. It, he seems to think it works so far, so we will see how that works. I think it's just a good card in general against Lugia. And if we do see Legacy splashed into a few more decks, I did see some Japanese lists including Legacy in Charizard with stuff like Iron Hands and things, so... If people start to get creative with it, realize how powerful of a card Legacy is, uh, Sinnoh stocks definitely go up. Other than that, we do have the uh, Fezendipity, so that's going to be in pretty much every deck. It's just such a powerful ability. If they knock someone out, draw three. Later on in the game, lets you draw out of those hands. Obviously, you don't have you don't have like a research or anything just to draw cards. So Pheasant is perfect for that, combined with like Unfair Stamp. Even like an Iono, if you can get into a Roxanne. You can see so many cards late game, which is something Charizard couldn't do previously. Other than that, it's just pretty much standard Charizard. It's very heavy on consistency. Obviously, adding the 2-2 line of Dusclops does make it slightly clunkier of a deck, and you will notice that. So we do uh, keep some cards in here to uh, keep the consistency level up. So where do I think it's going to place in this current format? I'm shocked it's not like 
one of the top decks now. You don't really see it played too much. I do think it's going to be back in tier one. I think the Dusclops line lets it get those numbers when it needs to. It doesn't need to rely on stuff like Maximum Bolt as much now. As you can do the same thing with Dusclops early on. If you want to reach like a Raging Bolt or an Iron Hands or something. It gives it a few lines to take multiple prizes and st uh, stuff like Gardevoir. Obviously you can Dusclops that active and then swing into whatever they put up. You could potentially even boss like a EX and take a three prize turn. So there are some big swings you can have with Dusclops. And I do think it's just a consistent deck. Whenever a format changes, those consistent decks rise to the top. And uh, Charizard is no exception. I think it's going to take its place up near the top somewhere. I'll sort of order these as I go. But let's uh, move on to... I want to try and focus on decks that are good now. And to give you some idea how they move into the next format. So let's go with Gardevoir. Now I will say in testing, this deck just seems... It seems broken. It just... It just beats anything. It has a chance into anything. It can just do insane things. Obviously, stuff like Curlia drawing cards. You've got Unfair Stamp as well as a supporter. So you could potentially Iono, Arvin, Boss, Turo. It's got a ton of different options. It's just it's just insane what it can do. With the Monkey Dory, it's got some really clever plays as well. You've got the Cresselia coming back in to move some of that damage back over. If... Uh, Dragapult tries to spread. If it tries to put it all on one, you could potentially Turo and remove it that way or Collapse Stadium. This list doesn't have Collapsed. I've been playing Collapsed. I haven't been running the Enhanced Hammer. I definitely see why you do need it in stuff like Lugia. Obviously, again, Legacy Energy can be very difficult to deal with for this deck. The Devo is still in there for the um, play in the mirror. Obviously, slowing them down whilst you evolve up your Curliers. Can just win you games, honestly. Also, you can set up some nice plays because we've got the Screamtail, we've got the uh, Flutter main damage, we've got the Cresselia. We've got a few different ways to just spread damage. Potentially, we could uh, use the Devo to some effect there into stuff like Charizard. Other than that, a very standard list, a very standard uh, Gardevoir list. I do think, just from playing it though, it is going to be one of the best decks still. Do I think it's going to be better than Charizard? I think potentially it is. Although it's hard to put anything above Charizard. When Charizard is good, it's just... It's just uh, crazy what it can do. Obviously, the Pidgeot just finding any card every turn. I'm going to put God of War slightly better than Charizard because, yeah, like I said in testing, I mean, we tested for like two days, so it was uh, a lot of games, but God of War seemed to be the deck. It just had answers into stuff it shouldn't have answers to. There were games where it fell like two, three, I think even at 1.4 prizes behind and still came back to win, which is just, yeah, it's just insane. I do think it is going to be the deck going into this format as it is now, so not much changes in that regard. Let's take a look at my favorite deck personally, and that is Reggie Drago. Reggie Drago, however you want to say it. Uh, this list is what I've been playing. The Poppy was an idea from my friend. I've seen it a little bit in Japan. It's not the most popular way of doing things, so basically you want to try and set up a third Reggie Drago. People have been doing it different ways. We've seen stuff like Gardenia's Vigor, which I'm not a massive fan of. This Poppy I'm a lot more interested in. We've seen stuff like Ursa Luna come in. Just ways to get that third attacker going, which it doesn't normally have, because it can be very difficult to set up, obviously, using your energy switches as the only way to set things up. Honestly, this list has been perfect. The Cancelling Clone come in to uh, potentially Kyurem their Manaphy, uh, so bring the Manaphy up. Cancelling Clone and Kyurem throw their things away. I did want to fit a Lost City in here because it does really improve the Gardevoir matchup, which is slightly favoured in their direction currently. So if you can find the space, I can't. I think if you take Poppy out, it probably wants to be an Ursa Luna. It wants to be something else to make your strategy work and get that third attacker into play. Potentially the only card I could see going is a Superior, but they can come in clutch. Maybe a Vessel again. I'm not crazy about losing either of those, but if I was going to try and find a card fit the lost city and that's probably what i would change and what i might change so it was worth mentioning here give you as much information as possible honestly this can go into and again very much like god will beat anything i think it's really good into the top two decks like it's almost even with god of war i think if you put the lost city in it's probably favored because you can just kyrem um, i've i think i've kyrem um, most games against God of War, it's not the most difficult thing to pull off, but you can also do it into stuff like Lost Zone, which is so much easier to do. You can do it into stuff like Charizard. There's a few different ways of doing it, um, or a few different decks that it's good against. Having that as an option, even without the Lost Zone or the Lost City, is absolutely insane. With the Lost City, they probably just scoop on the spot, although 
A lot of the time you probably scoop on the spot anyway. It's such a deficit to come back from. So it's really good into these stage two decks. For that reason, honestly, I think it should go top. It does beat the other top two decks. So there's no reason it shouldn't be here. It just feels really weird putting it there because it's not a deck a lot of people are playing. It's not one that's at all the top table. So I don't know if it can go straight to the top from where it's really tough. I think me putting it here would be a massive shout and something I'm probably going to get wrong. It's definitely tier one. I 100% think it is tier one. I think these are the three tier one decks in this format. So I'm going to put it here. Honestly, it could go anywhere on here. Outside of that, next deck we should probably talk about, and honestly could be tier one as well, is the Lost Box. Again, doesn't really change much. This is two cards difference from Andrew Hedrick's list from uh, a recent tournament. So it, yeah, not really much changes. Obviously the Pheasant comes in again. We lose a Vacuum and a uh, Poker Stop. See, it does feel like you lose a bit of the speed, but I think if you're taking out a Vacuum, Poker Stop's probably the other card to go. Obviously not as many uh, stadiums able to be removed. Not needing to remove as many if you've only got the two vacuums. The other card I've brought in here is the Cancelling Clone. So against Charizard, you've got your Prime Catcher, you've got a boss. You have got a Power Pad, so you potentially can boss again. You've got the Iron Bundle. Going around the Charizard is your only strategy with this deck. You've got no way to deal with a Charizard. You do have to keep doing that. It's also nice with so much gust to have the Cancelling Clone, because obviously we can use Agri Ninja. Bring up the Mana Fee and take two prizes. As long as we're taking two each turn, Charizard is a winning matchup. It can be very difficult though. In a lot of testing we've tried so far, it does seem to feel, feel slightly short here and there. So for that reason, I think pretty good into Gardevoir. It's, it's maybe even into Charizard. I don't think it beats or has any way to deal with Reggie Drago. I'm just trying to think what else is going to be here. Yeah, I think the other decks here, it's not really great into either. So I do think it's got some good matchups in important... Uh, situation so i do think it's going to be quite high where where is lost box is it this one that can go there i think it's still in a pretty good spot um just having a look at some of these these are pretty wild where's reg regular raging bolt uh there's maridon so let's talk about maridon then since we can see where that one is uh very th this is just ian rob's list from the most recent tournament maridon isn't one i've been testing enough but obviously i've played it a ton before we know what maridon does the strategy is very much the same. It's not got the swing it has into the bigger things. But I think if Charizard gets more popular, it might not be the uh, the call. It does really struggle. Well, it struggled into Charizard and it's only got worse. Not really many ways to one hit it other than the Raichu. And you don't have the Flaffies and stuff to reuse it anymore. Iron Thornzo is very powerful. If you can set that in the active, decks like Charizard, decks like Gardevoir are going to struggle to set up anyway. And potentially you can just win that way. Just poke him with uh, Iron Thorns. It's a quick deck. It's very similar to something like Raging Bolt. It just tries to race you in prizes. And if you're having to put down stuff like Rotom in Charizard or Luminion, if you put down Luminion, you're probably losing anyway. Um, it can just uh, trade well. It can eventually take out a Charizard late game with a Raichu anyway. So I do think it's possible. This list, the only thing that's going to be added is the Pheasantipity for sure. Other than that, I don't really know what else. I don't know what it would change for either. Like I said, I've not played this enough. To really give advice on the list but this is a uh, winning list a top list uh is one that the top players are using so it's one that you can note down like i say do add the pheasant uh, other than that it's uh gonna be very similar so where does maridon go i'm trying to think what else is gonna be here don't know if it's as good as lost box honestly i think it might be here okay this is raging bolt but it's uh for some reason got comp fay there completely ignore that let's take a look at a list then again this is one we did play quite a lot as raging bolt's been very popular it's a very powerful deck it's very quick and again it is just the pheasant coming in i don't know what other changes you would really make there's not many cards in the set obviously it's not full set so it does uh yeah it does change things slightly the pheasant is massive in this so don't underestimate it obviously later in the game those ionos are things that kill raging bolt and pheasant is a way to get out of that i think Potentially you could play Mew as well. It does really come down to bench space and what you what else you need to play. Obviously, if you need Squawk, you don't really then want a Mew and Pheasant as you don't really have the space for it all. We do see the Sandy Shock still in there as the one prizer just to trade into with us some uh, single prizes. I think it's fine. This deck in testing, it was back and forth. I don't think it's great into a lot of stuff. Some of the matchups it's really good into, like the Re uh, Reggie Drago matchup. Obviously, you just play single prizes and not much you can leave in the active for it 
potentially could promote like a Horlucha, or if you play a Cleffa or Charizard, there's a few things there that they would have to then boss around or capture around. I just, I think it was overhyped in this format. It probably won't get the same hype going into this one, and it's probably fair that it doesn't. I'm going to put it in tier two, already put it there. So you knew where I was going with that anyway. Um, I do think it's a very powerful deck. I don't think it's powerful enough to go up here. I will say the margins are very thin on these tiers, like very thin. But I do think it's important to have some separation. So next up, we're going to go for, let's go into Lugia. Lugia is a deck that can literally beat anything on its day, but it very rarely has its day. You need so much to go your way. You're not only relying on setting up this uh, strategy, you're relying on coin flips to get your strategy set up, which is just... It's so luck reliant. I can't say this is going to be a tier one. I don't think it's fair to put it in tier two, so I'm going to put it in the middle. Just look at this list though. Legacy, it can do so many things. The Sob is such an incredible attack. Not a lot of stuff is playing Ogre Pond, but you have to bench Manaphy in case they are. Because if you don't, they probably win. I just think it's got the highest power level. It's not the most consistent though, and that really holds it back. But if it can hit its stride, it can hit that consistency. You are going to see Lugias at the top table. Although saying that, it should have been the same in this format and we've never really seen it happen. The other thing is we don't really see much added from uh, the upcoming set. Honestly, it could be a tier 2 deck. I kind of want to put it in tier 1.5. This is a rough one. Uh, I'm going to put it in here. I think it has a potential to be somewhere around here. I don't know if it will be. Uh, but uh, yeah, I want to believe this is gonna, it's going to have its time. Worlds could be it. It could be the time for Lugia. We shall see. Let's quickly go through some of these other ones then. Burnett can go in here. Chansey, again, not really finding its place. Greninja. Quad Iron Thorns. I think you just play Maridon if you want to play Iron Thorns. Espathra, I think, does actually have some cool stuff. Um, it's got some extra cards, probably here maybe. Uh, let's go Dragapult into Tier 2. Future Hands, 2.5. Gudra 2.5. Although Gudra potentially could be a 2 as well. Chen Pao 2. We have seen it resurge a little bit. Obviously, Dragapult not being enough to scare it away. Uh, let's put it up there. Anything else I want to talk about here? The new uh, Dogi deck or Okie Dogi. Not really had much impact. Not really seen anything of it, honestly. Which is kind of disappointing, obviously. Which is kind of disappointing. Any new deck, you do want to see it have some impact just to shake the matter up a little. I don't think there's anything else here worth mentioning. I am going to say Arceus. Giratina and Arceus we need to put on. I'm going to do Giratina as the Lost Zone version. And then we'll just do Arceus in general. Because I honestly think the Fire version is pretty strong. Uh, as well as just like the Raging Bolt Fire Toolbox deck. Uh, so we're going to put that all under Arceus. I think it potentially could be as high as tier 2. It's got a lot of tools. It's got a lot of really powerful uh, things into different decks. I'm going to put it in tier 2. I think Ancient could be tier 2 as well. Although saying that, Ancient could have a really good spot here. Stuff like Maraidon, Raging Bolt, and all of these things end up being decks. All these single prizes, able to knock out these two prizes is probably a big swing in its favor. Could Ancient Box be back? I don't know. I've not played it enough to put it in tier 1.5. Um, there's a chance it could be. I'm going to put it like here. Giratina, nah. now, if uh, if Charizard is back, if it's going to be the most dominant deck, obviously Giratina beats that. So I think it has to be at least here. I guess the question is, could it go this high? Giratina Arceus might be the one to go here. Um, I'm going to slap it in. I'm going to put Giratina like here, potentially. It's tough. It is really tough. I think, yeah, I think it really does depend how the meta shapes up. If Charizard is going to be the deck, you want to go into stuff like Giratina, Iron Leaves. We do see Ogre Pond and things come into decks, so Raging Bolt, Regidrago, or just we've seen stuff like Chansey, Ogre Pond. I'm not going to recommend playing that, but uh, it's one to have on the radar. In terms of control, I think we probably should throw that in somewhere. I just think we've spoke about a lot of decks, including Cancelling Clone. I've even seen Charizard list play it to get around stuff like Mimikyu. So I really, it's hard to say control is going to be in a good spot. Um, I'm going to put it in tier 2.5 at the top. Potentially could be two. Uh, I'm going to go 2.5. I think that's fine. Uh, do any of these go up one? If I was going to move one of these up, it would probably be Raging Bolt. 
I'm going to move Raging Bolt up. Yeah, I think that's fine. That is how I'm going to leave this. I don't think some of these are worth rating. I think that's going to be a disappointment. So let's put it at the bottom. Other than that, we spoke about variations of these decks. But yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that is my tier list for Shrouded Fables. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, obviously, this is a very early list. We haven't even got Shrouded Fables yet. It is very much for my own testing, looking at Japanese lists, seeing what's going on. I'm very excited to see the impact it has on cups and challenges leading up to Worlds. But most importantly, like I said, this is all about the World Championships. My friend's attendance, so I've been playtesting with him, trying to give him uh, that last push, that last bit of testing, that last bit of inspiration to hopefully go on and win it so hopefully you all join me in the comments below we're wishing jack a very fruitful world championships fingers crossed for you if you've got any comments any uh, changes you would make what you think's different obviously we're all gonna have different opinions drop them in the comments below if you made it to this point in your video thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one